it's adorable and amazing. This is, you know what? It just feels like I've accomplished something. Ah, oh, the pain, the suffering, the fun, quite honestly, is finally come to an end. Well, the fun hasn't come to the end, but the enjoyment of repeatedly turning things in actually has. So if you're wondering, I have completed a bit of a personal journey recently behind the scenes for the past, I don't know, been a couple of months, maybe more now. But in total, it's been a few years, obviously, since the Ishgard restoration. The last time I took part, I got the Saint of Affirmament title. It involved much, like, basically no sleep um, <laughs> to be able to get that title. And uh, yeah, finally today, well, last night, actually, because I couldn't sleep properly because of fan fest uh, sort of preparations and hype, uh, I actually completed the full achievement for castle in the sky if you're wondering what castle in the sky is essentially if you get 500 000 points as it says on this achievement towards your skyward score as every disciple of hand and land you will actually get the pteranodon horn i've saved it to claim it with you let's just claim that straight away boom done we immediately have ourselves one of the rarest mounts in the game not the rarest but one of the rarest uh, simply because of the effort needed to go through that. Let's learn that straight away. We'll look at that in just a second. I'm so hyped to look at that. Uh, but of course, that involves, like I say, 500,000 points towards every disciple of hand and land. That includes fishing, botany, mining. Let's just show you that. It's, it's yeah. If you've ever done the Ishgard restoration or diadem, you'll know exactly all about this. I have a few recommendations for people, not um, not many though, to be perfectly honest. As you can see on a resource inspector, 500,000 as a miner, 500,000 as a botany, 502,000 as a fisher. And uh, yeah, basically that involved going around looping in the diadem for various different things. I would definitely recommend doing your mining and botany um, before you're fishing, I did fishing first, and fishing was like redonkulously easy in comparison to everything else. But uh, mining and botany took for literal time immoriate to be able to do. And then the crafting side of things wasn't actually that bad, especially considering more recently my plan of action was let's get the lodestar tools, which is what I've got for every single roll. Uh, as you can see, I've gone out my way to get the Lodestar hammers and things like that. We did a video on that. Uh, effectively, they have like condition changes, like additional buffs to them. That applies to the Gathering ones as well. The Gathering ones are really quite sick when you actually use them for extra stuff. Uh, but the Crafting ones increases the quality, uh, increases two quality at 1.75 times higher than normal when material condition is good. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it does add up quite considerably. My recommendation for this is definitely to either do the crafting and gathering stuff now for this achievement or to wait for another expansion's worth of stuff because it was just it was very easy it was very easy uh the macros that i ended up using are all from team craft as you can see these are the points down below uh so i'll link them in the description there's a full comprehensive guide that's pretty much what i followed there's no reason for me to do a guide when theirs is so good and effectively, you need 500,000 points in each one of them. Uh, you end up getting Kupo stamps. There's a lot of achievements from this. Like I say, it isn't just the Pteranodon mount and a couple of achievements. There's some really cool titles. Uh, ones I didn't even know existed. So what, we've got Hand of Creation for the Disciple of Hand. Um, I did the Kupo of Fortune stuff and got Fortune's favored Kupo for winning first prize 30 times in Kupo of Fortune. And then, of course, you get the individual titles for every single uh, crafter and gatherer. So we've got, what, Knife of the Firmament, etc. And if we look at the filtered categories, actually all disciples, you'll see there is an absolute ton of titles, achievements, all sorts of things you get from this. I suppose this would be my next plan to do the Resplendent Crafter tools, but that's going to have to wait a while because I am quite burnt out, as you would probably imagine. But yeah, if you go down each of the things, look, frame of the firmament, stuff like that. So yeah, and then of course, you've got the mining and botany ones. 
Oh boy, watch YouTube, find a movie or series of movies, a TV series or TV series with lots of seasons and uh, put that on um, effectively and just don't think too much about it. The more you think about the crafting and things like that, especially the crafting or the gathering, uh, the longer it's going to take you. Uh, also get lots and lots of materials before you even start the crafting. Um, yeah, and definitely check which materials are needed for every single craft under the side quest on Restoration 4. Make a list of these. Like I say, it's on Team Craft. You, you don't need to do this. They've listed it all for us. But make sure you collect all of these. Clear a, or a retainer or two so that you have access to materials. I've been using two retainers for that recently. Uh, basically storing as much as I physically could. I had to throw away some stuff and add some stuff to my glamour dresser that I'd forgotten about to make room. But yeah, it's just a very long journey. Um, you can quite easily lose track of time. It takes a long time. Even the crafting stuff, you're like, oh, this will only take me a little bit of time, even because, you know, I've got a, a flawless macro, you know, I've got level 90 stats and abilities and things like that, craftsmanship and control. This will be a breeze. But the amount of time it actually takes to go through the various steps on an expert recipe, soon you realize it's like four or five hours for an inventory's worth... <laughs> <laughs> of materials and then you're like oh boy and then you've got to turn them in and every time you turn them in you've got to either decline the koopa of fortune message that pops up would you like to you your capped on koopa of fortune tickets would you like to play no it's like no no and then there's messages telling you to go and change your scripts for um you know various materials good top tip for that get the rare dice um i do a lot of videos where i look at glamours this, over the past, like, year, last year, has been so incredibly useful. I haven't really had to use the market board as much, because, uh, obviously, I, I showed die previews. But there's a, a big market, obviously, for the gun, metal, black, pearl, wine stuff. But, yeah, it's a great opportunity to pick up some of the dies. And if you need any of the other uh, stuff as well, there's uh, glamour outfits, there's all sorts of stuff, there's furnishings. There's just an absolute plethora of fantastic things so you can very easily get all of those items and, um, yeah, yeah, decorate a house, make it look cool. Right, but yeah, I will say it is, it's something that if you focus on or you, you try to set yourself a deadline, it can be a nightmare. But if you can try and get, especially for the gathering, if you can do 30,000 points, you know, in an entire day, then... That's quite amazing, quite honestly. I was able to sort of get about 10,000, 20,000 points in a day's worth of gathering. Just simply without wanting to eat my own eyes. Some people have shortened that quite a lot. If you look at Reddit threads, some people are absolutely just super focused on trying to get this done. I don't know how they do it. It took me a very long time, as you know, from the date of this video compared to when we first saw um, somebody look at the Pteranodon originally. Right, let's go to Camp Dragonhead because it's snowy and we'll look at this mount together from a first person perspective. I've been waiting so long for this. I think this is literally where I showed off uh, the Pteranodon last time from the, the perspective of someone who didn't have it looking at another player. So uh, this will be quite fun. So let's look at this together. I'm so excited. So it's on page three for me. This is my 220th mount, which is not a small number, not a very good number. I don't really collect mounts, but I, apparently I do. <clears throat> the Pteranodon. Summon forth your Pteranodon, a winged scalekin that has existed since ancient times. In the course of feeding upon food scraps discarded at the bounty, this creature grew so familiar with men as to allow riders upon its back. This goes to show that the way to a prehistoric creature's heart is through its stomach. Much like me, actually. The hidden text says, w With what powerful magics did they tame this dread fiend? A quote there of Nashu Makaraka. Great, nice Hildebrand references there. Let's have a look at this then. Oh, I'm so hyped, so hyped. Oh, it's adorable and amazing. This is... You know what? It just feels like I've accomplished something. It really does. For the first time in the game, it has been a very long time coming. This looks amazing. 
Looks more amazing when you have it, <laughs> but when you look at other people with it. Yeah, for the longest time, this has been like the signature of somebody who um, who you, you know has played the game probably a little bit too much, maybe. Um, and uh, it's a sign of, of complete and utter respect for me. Similar to how I used to play World of Warcraft and I'd see somebody with like endgame gear in Shatrath or something in the Burning Crusade. I'd be like, wow, look at that. You know, this is the same kind of feeling I get. And I know it's just a, a grind and there's not really too much skill involved in it. Just how much time do you have? But uh, look at that. Doesn't it look amazing? The colors, even in this dim light of the blizzard that we're flying into here in Kerthus. Oh, it looks so good. It reminds me of Monster Hunter as well, you know, or like Jurassic Park or something. Oh boy, like Jurassic Park 3. I quite like that movie, actually. So yeah, there are no special actions with this or anything like that. Uh, in terms of its music, though, that's something I don't know. Does it have special mount music? Yeah, so it's not generic mount music. That's a good use of track as well. Oh, it looks so good soaring in the air like that. So yeah, if you're wondering about in terms of scaling, does this scale with your character? I don't actually know. And I'm not going to do this on another character just to find out. But the detail is lovely, isn't it? Look at that. Look at his face. Rawr. But yeah, just thought I'd do a quick video. I know it's kind of anticlimactic, probably. People expecting more from this, but it is just a really cool mount. And I'm really happy to finally have it. We originally did a video on this. And since I first saw someone else with it, I've been like, one day I will find the time and the effort to get that. Sometimes you just have to make time. And there's no time like the present, to be perfectly honest. I'll be doing a lot of things like this. Just going through my achievements, trying to find things that I haven't done before that I've set aside to do in the future when there's nothing really much to do. We're waiting for 6.55 and, uh, you know, obviously Dawn Trail in summer. So I've got plenty of time. I plan to go back in Eureka. There's all of the other weapons to finish. So we'll probably do a stream-based uh, community event for that and get as many people through that as possible who have never done it like we did originally. But yeah, that was my quick video on this. Thoughts and opinions. Thank goodness it's over. I am personally excited to see if Dawn Trail adds another restoration. I kind of hope it does. I don't know what, what that says about me. Maybe I like punishment. I'm a glutton for, for a grind. I do like a good grind, as they say. Yeah, it's just nice, isn't it? Really, really nice. I'm happy that I finally got it. Anyway, let me know if you've got this one yet. If you plan to get this one... Links in the description will take you to the TeamCraft website. I'm not affiliated in any way, but they were incredibly concise. And it, it does it does what it says on the tin. It got the job done. Can't complain there. They've got maps of where to guy, uh, gather, what sort of things you should go for, how you should do them, how you should plan it out. But my advice, don't think too much about it. Just just do a little bit of gathering. Any Any bit of gathering, any bit of crafting, it goes a long way. And it all adds up. They can't take points away from you. They can only ever add them. Anyway, much love. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to go fly around on this aimlessly for the next few hours. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's finally mine. Oh, it looks so good flying above Ishgard like this. I wonder what the next challenge is. Hmm.